Okay, so first things first. Again, I um, I like to design a background early on. You don't have to do it this way, or if you were to put a background in, you can change the color early on. But from when I came to do this, I had a specific style in mind with the gradient map. I had a kind of idea of what colors were to use. You know, some 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 purples and blues that you can see there. So I thought they contrast really well with a gray. So just put your background in. The circle icon here is the adjustment layers. Solid color, and then you just pick what you want. Okay, and that's that. Next thing is quick selection. Now, again, as I've said in the different in the previous videos, different ways you can do this. You can click select, select and mask, and then you can either choose to remove the background and then invert the layer. If it's easier to just highlight the background areas, if it's hard to mask the actual image, or you can specifically click the um, the person you're trying to trying to mask. Uh, this one was quite good actually because all the textures and colors in here are quite dark compared to a white background, so it was quite easy for this um, this mask to work, or for the quick to do it to do it this way. Sorry. And then if you were to do that, you could just output to layer mask. Make sure it's set to that. Okay. And there you go. If you didn't want to do that, you could also do because it, it worked just the same. Over here, quick selection tool. Increase the size of your brush using the square bracket keys on the keyboard, and you can just do it this way. Once you've highlighted it and you're happy with it, you come up to here, select and mask, brings you to this section just so you can see it. Then you can review as well when it's set to um, overlay. For example, now you can see that this wasn't in the mask initially. You can go over it, get in what you need. There you go. Output two layer mask. There you go, different ways of doing it. Once you've done that, the next thing you would do, like before, and this is this was um, important this time, the refine edge brush. So select, select and mask, this one here. Second one, refine edge brush. Now if you've seen the previous ones, you know that this kind of brings in any fine textures or details that were removed, specifically stuff like hair. And in this case, all the feathers, it brought in lots of things like that. Now, as I've said before as well, for this to be most effective, you really need to concentrate on your mask, getting it thorough. I clearly haven't here, I've just rushed through it just to demonstrate, so there's bits missing. But for example, let's say you were using this image, when you were going through it and you were masking it out, try your best to, from reducing the size, to really get in these other, these individual hair strands, the feathers, just so when you come to do your fine edge, there's a lot less work to do. But start with the hair, click a point in the hair just so it can it'll process it and it'll look for those textures and colours just paint around the edges. You can already see here it's bringing in those fine strands of hair it will bring that kind of like fuzziness with it which is parts of the background coming through but again we can remove that. We'll go through clicking that and it will also remove the white as well in the background. And if you come over here click this you can re reduce the hardness which would make it a softer brush. I usually just keep mine on 100. But yeah, you just go around, removing the background, bringing in the strands of hair. I think if it's further down here, there's quite a lot of feathers that are missing here. Yeah, see? So when you're doing your quick selection, really try and keep these in it just so it's a lot easier when you come to refine your edge. But the next stage was this. Go on when you've gone over it all, you're happy with everything that's been brought back in. Make sure it's set to layer mask again. Okay. Now, again, as if you've seen the previous video, you'll know the next stage here, but just to refine it even further, what we do is, using the brush tool, again, increase the size, decrease the size with the bracket keys or with the, the control section here. Make sure the mode sets overlay and make sure you've got black and white selected in your color palette and you can remove bits of these fuzziness here. Now in the previous one how I showed you to do this was holding alt and clicking the layer mask it would invert it like this and then it would make it easier for you to see those fuzzy areas that need to be removed or for example the, the, the textures in between the hair strands you want to remove. Now for this one I actually didn't do it this way it does the same job it's just how you view it but I actually did it without it being inverted I just, I just did it by um, 
just lucky and I thought it was much easier this way because it was a white background it was there was clear differences this time I just did it like this you could do it with it inverted and do it that way but this time I chose I just chose not to and I found it a lot easier uh, again it, it depends on your image because they're all going to be different but I found it easier doing it this way going between the strands of hair if I show you on this one lots of fine details here I found it a lot easier to do it this way but that's a very <laughs> sped up version of um, getting your mask ready to start um, bringing your magazine cover together